Now, I've long wanted to visit South Dakota and play poker in Deadwood, just like Calamity Jane and Wild Bill Hickok, mostly because I wanted to see if I could find a win at tournament poker and maybe even get lucky with the infamous Dead Man's Hand. I'll just be certain to make sure my back is kept facing a wall. So after a week of visiting other sites around the area, my friends dropped me off at the only place in town that's having a tournament today. That's Cadillac Jacks. It's just up the hill from the historic downtown Deadwood area, where this weekend it's the town's Wild Bill Days, annual event to celebrate the life and legend of Wild Bill Hickok. And that's where my friends are going. They're not poker players. Now, a quick note before we get into the game. This was supposed to be a $100 deep stack tournament, but it ended up being a seven-player sit-and-go, mostly because everyone else in the town seems to be attending the trial reenactment of James McCall. He's the youngster who shot Wild Bill in the back. Anyway, we all agreed to the new terms of the game and kicked off the action keeping our $22,000 and starting chips. So here we are at Cadillac Jacks in downtown Deadwood. They do not allow cameras on at the table at all. You can't even take a picture of your winning hand. So we're gonna try our best to give you some hand breakdowns as we can. So in the first round, blinds were at 100, 100, and I was first to act. And the very first hand, I looked down at pocket kings. And so, um, I lead out for 300 and all six players call. So the flop comes, which was all low cards, three, do six, blank. Um, small blind, big blind check. I lead out for 600. Everybody folds. I take down the pie. Easy game. A few hands in, I've got the small blind when I look down at ace, king, off suit. Now there are three limpers already in the pot, so I decide to raise to 500, hoping to thin the herd. <laughs> yeah, like that didn't work. We all go five ways to the flop of three, six, 10 rainbow, and I make a continuation bet for a thousand. Both the big blind and early position players fold, only the cutoff and button call. Now, I'm not really sure what to make of both these players calling since it's so early in the game, but with this board texture, I gotta think that they're somewhere in the neighborhood of Luckboxville. Now we're off to the turn, which is absolutely no help to me. It's the eight of spades, but I'm not ready to give up on this primo hand yet, <laughs> even though the dealer already has. So I continue my losing strategy and lead out for 2K this time, praying to the poker goddesses that this blatant bluff gets through. Thanks for playing. The cutoff quickly calls, which prompted our button to make your typical standard hand number three play by going all in for his entire stack. Ah, that's right, 20K all in. Now I felt like my head was on a swivel as I glanced down at the board, back at my hand, over to him, and then I released those cards faster than a unicorn at a rainbow sale because this bet surely meant that he either had a made hand or at least two pair, maybe the nut flush draw, who knows, but certainly it was beating my ace king off suit. And clearly this dude wanted to end the hand before the river, and I guess nothing else made sense, right? So I think the cutoff agreed as he played copycat to my snap fold and the button flashed a tiny Cheshire cat like smirk. He raked in the pot. At the start of this level, I'm in the small blind looking down at an okie dokie hand. It's the ace deuce of diamonds again. My nemesis under the gun, he limp calls as does the cutoff in seat three, button folds, I complete and the big blind who's been nursing a small stack, he checks. We go four ways to a fortunate flop of jack nine eight couple of diamonds, and as a point of fact here, I typically scoff at donk betters, especially when the short stack's so close by. So I wasn't gonna be that character at the table. I check to see what the other fellows are gonna do with this very wet board. The big blind, like I said, been nursing his small stack for the past couple of orbits, most likely had none of this flop and doesn't even attempt a bet. He checks, as does our nemesis, when the villain in the cutoff decides he loves what the dealer's delivered. He makes a reasonable bet of 2K. Now I suppose he could be playing a couple of face cards that includes a jack or maybe some middle of the road connectors. I'm hoping he doesn't have a made hand with queen 10 of sorts. Still, I didn't fly all the way out to South Dakota to play in the same town where Wild Bill got his thrill off the felt to fold my nut flush draw here, even if this is a small little sit and go. So I make the call. Big blind folds, and I'm really hoping this cutoff isn't related to Jack McCall. The turn comes, and it's a brick. 
So we both go check, check to the river, and it's the card I just knew had to show up. It's the Six of Diamonds. Now, I'm fairly confident that a bet here will most likely play out like I'm Captain Obvious to our cutoff, ensuring that he knows I hit my flush. Still, I just can't help myself, especially since we made it to heads up here, and I suspect he might be thinking I'm bluffing again. Uh, he picked me off a few hands earlier in the match. Eh, either he didn't really have much of a hand or figures he's beat. Either way, he kept those valuable chips for the next round of shenanigans, and I scoop in the pot, earning even more accolades as this week's River Rat. We interrupt our regularly scheduled hand analysis to bring you some exciting news about the World Series of Poker. Poker fans and River Rats alike get to know Mike Thomas, the man who just turned a poker player's dream into a world-class reality. Thomas, living just north of Pittsburgh, has done just that. He just won his way to the WSOP main event thanks to the Viking Social Club in Steubenville, Ohio. With his father watching every hand, not really knowing what Mike was up to, Mike's Pocket Kings triumphed over Pocket Jacks for the win. The final table, it went over two hours of intense play, and you know, Mike wasn't afraid to go all in, pushing his chips into the center many times before clinching the victory. Now is the time for Mike to take on the world. Our River Rat wishes you all the best luck imaginable, and here's to seeing you at the final table. So stay tuned as Mike hits the largest poker stage we know, the World Series of Poker main event. We now return you to our regularly scheduled hand analysis already in progress. Okay, we are at our first break. The last level was 600, 600, 1200. No antes in this one. Um, the very last hand, I have 10 five of diamonds. I'm in the big blind. And there are two other callers in. Uh, one very active reg who's just to my left. He calls the 1200 and then we also had the button calls for 1200. The flop comes down amazing, all diamonds. Um, and the ace comes on the turn. We go check, check. And the river is an innocuous queen of spades. Um, he check, oh, I'm sorry, um, I bet 2000. Other guy folds, villain shoves all in. I snap called and he was bluffing. He had a busted straight. So here we go, double up. Oh yeah, something I forgot to mention at break. I think we might have picked up a massive tell on one of our opponents. Now I'm not gonna disclose about it just quite yet because making live reads can be a bit tricky at times. However, the good news is you don't really need the detective skills of a Texas Ranger to pull it off. It just takes a little bit of observation and knowledge of what to look for in these spots. And as the clock was winding down on the day, we did manage to find a win. <laughs> okay, it was a chop with our nemesis, who seemingly had my number for most of the day. But we did manage to split up that W, and because this is a poker vlog, I thought it might be fun to get a bit chatty with them, and here's how that all went down. So, I'm with Craig. Craig, where are you from? Here. Oh, okay. And do you play here at Cadillac Jack regularly? Kind of, yeah. yeah. All right, so um, we just chopped first yep. and second. That was a lot of fun. Uh, what, what did we play? A couple, three hours? Uh, we started at noon, so yeah. 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 Um, you're a pretty tough competitor. You picked me off a couple of times, so I have to ask, was there a tell that I gave off when you called down with the pocket deuces very early on? No, no. Just, just the size of the bet. So uh, it was a sizing tell. Yeah. All right. Well, Craig, congratulations. You are awesome. And uh, good luck to you, sir. You too. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Had a whole lot of fun here in South Dakota. And even though we didn't have a chance to show you all the hands as they were happening, we did the best we could given the Gaming Commission, all those restrictions and whatnot. So until next time, play smart, play with heart, and always have fun. This is Marty, and you've been watching Reflections of a River Rat.